Hi, this is a video all about the rear brakes, sorting out any brake problems and giving them a major service. So this car is a Rover, or rather MG ZS. Same sort of brake system is used on the Honda Civic, Honda Accord, Rover 2545, MG, ZR, ZS and probably quite a few others. Um, very similar to a lot of uh, different cars as well. So you'll need a few tools, a few sockets, uh, maybe some spanners, but we'll go over that as we go. First job is, while the handbrake is on, is to slacken off these uh, Phillips screws that hold the disc onto the hub, uh, for which you'll need a large size posi drive screwdriver. They're often very stiff, people do them up far too tight. And you have to get a good lock in with your screwdriver, push in while turning at the same time. You don't need to have these uh, tight, and I recommend you put some grease on them as well. They're really only used to hold the disc in place while you're installing the caliper and the wheel later. When the wheel is bolted on, that uh, securely holds the disc in place. The handbrake is currently on. So, get rid of these while well, that's the case. And remove this dust shield at the back. You need an 8mm spanner or socket and wrench. I've already taken that knot off the back. Uh, they're 8mm uh, bolts normally. Somebody's put some Phillips screw in here, which is difficult to get off and strictly necessary. I don't need to remove the top one, so I'm just going to push that dust shield out of the way. Now, the next job is to remove these bolts for the guide pins for the caliper. Uh, originals were 12mm, some brake kits come with replacement bolts that are 13mm. Um, fairly easy to undo with the right socket. 12mm, there you go. And that one is actually quite difficult to get to with a wrench, so we need to use a spanner for that. 12mm. Now the problem with the brakes that I was sorting out on this car was the handbrake was very unbalanced, it was braking more on one side than the other and the brake efficiency was way down, it didn't seem to brake very well on the handbrake and the disc is all rusted up as you can see mostly through neglect on this car because it's been sit idle, sat idle for a while so we can slacken those up and uh, might as well remove them, doesn't matter too much. Uh, next we need to take the handbrake off and release the handbrake cable. With the handbrake cable slackened off you'll see here there's a little pin with a little split pin at the end, clevis pin, which we need to pull out with uh, some long nose pliers or something like that. It's got a little twist on the end of the the pin that we need to lift over the end, and there we go. And then we can slide out a little pin that holds the handbrake cable in place. There we go. And uh, might as well take the spring off at this stage as well. Again, I don't think it's absolutely essential, but in case there is any uh, problem with the spring, it's just a matter of leaving that spring out of the hole, and that will come off. That's the position it goes in. Check that uh, handbrake cable works and the handbrake actuating mechanism is working, which it does. So the brake pads are a little bit stuck on. Uh, it does just about move. Probably the pads themselves are a bit rusted. So uh, next we'll lever off the caliper. Now that we've taken our bolts off. Gently push it off like so. We don't want to stretch the hydraulic pipe, flexible pipe under here. Under here, so uh, we want to support the weight of the caliper. What we can do, I think, is wedge it slightly higher up, like so. And the flexible pipe is not under too much strain then. So here's the brake pads. Not uh, too bad in this particular case, so that one is 
quite stiff and well rusted on so that's probably part of the problem why it's binding so we'll just leave that off what you'll often find on these brakes is that uh, you get rust especially on the under surface of this little spring clip you get rust here which uh, pushes out the spring clip clamps the brake pads too tight so uh, what I like to do is remove this uh, caliper uh, bracket uh, it's got two bolts at the back which I think is something like 15 millimeters and um, then we can get some decent uh, sandpaper or sanding mechanism to basically sand off the rust give it a nice uh, greasing with copper grease which is the other thing we'll need for this job before reassembling uh, the other thing often seizes are these guide pins that one is very stiff oh that needs lubricating that one also very very stiff the brakes won't work properly at all with these guide pins not moving in and out smoothly they basically should move smoothly in and out so we'll take the whole bracket off and um, fix these guide pins next so next we remove the two 15mm bolts with a socket and torque wrench as shown so with these two bolts removed you can then, then remove the bracket and you'll see with these two screws removed you can then remove the disc if you're changing the disc then that's how to do it um, here the disc isn't too worn so we're just going to try and remove the rust clean it up and make it uh, suitable for reuse and to do that i'm going to use the sanding attachment on an electric drill uh, there's also all sorts of different ways of sanding this off um, people say you should uh, get them machined uh, to do it properly but it's only fairly light surface dust so uh, some sanding will be good uh, i've temporarily refitted the screws just to hold it in place and then we'll go with the sanding machine to sand off the rust <laughs> Most of the rust has been removed, it's a nice uh, fairly flat surface, doesn't look as pretty as a new one but functionally it's good enough. Then we can turn it over and refit the screws to do the other side. Yeah, I think that's good enough, still got some rust bit marks on it but overall that is quite serviceable. On the question of the caliper that might be stuck, then uh, you could completely remove it if it's completely stuck by pushing down the brake pedal to push it out and see one of my other videos for uh, lubricating and uh, freeing up a brake caliper. But for the moment, although it's quite stiff, um, I think we're just going to try and lubricate on the inside and wind it back in. So to lubricate on the inside, and I've started a little bit already, push back the rubber, get a little scoop of this stuff, which is uh, rubber grease. Looks after all the seals, looks after the rubbers, and lubricates as well. And uh, we don't need to push it in all the way around because we're going to be rotating this uh, piston in the caliper to actually be able to uh, push the piston back in again unlike the front calipers the rear calipers you have to wind uh, clockwise to uh, wind them in it's tricky now because it's getting very slippery anti-clockwise to wind it out so uh, just try and push some of this grease in taking care not to get any grit in there as well which is a little bit difficult you just have to clean up beforehand i think at least we've got some in there i think that'll have to do clean that up a bit and what you then need to try and do is to get a flat uh, blade or a screwdriver get it in these uh, slots and try and rotate the uh, piston to get it to turn this one is uh, particularly stiff and uh, the only option really is to try get a screwdriver in this way 
something that will attach. I think there are special tools for uh, winding these back. You can buy it from the parts shop. Um, you might be able to make your own tool up as well, which I might just have to do here. Or another way of doing it, I suppose, is with a wrench, try and grip the top of the piston, taking care not to pinch the rubber seal. And then uh, use this to rotate it. So we can get a good hold on there, like so. And then we have to hold the rest of the caliper. Yep, it's totally slowly turning, so I think we'll just wiggle it backwards and forwards a few times. Just try and free it up. Might be easier if the whole thing was uh, removed and stuck in a bench. But uh, this is the least time consuming way of doing it because then you'd have to bleed the brakes as well. Which actually I think we might do is a good idea because it should be done every couple of years anyhow to replace the fluid because the fluid tends to absorb water and then encourages rust inside the caliper. Once we started moving a little bit it does, start, it does start to move a bit easier. So you can see now uh, it's starting to wind back into the caliper. We'll probably now do it with our screwdriver. We need to wind it back in because it's going to fit new brake pads and uh, it should cost thicker than the old ones. So we need to allow more clearance. And it's good to get that grease moving around the piston as well. We might be able to do it this way. Right, it's still quite stiff. So, as I say, quite difficult without the appropriate tool. Uh, not actually impossible. So, next we clean up the caliper bracket and the guide pins. So, we need to clean off the rust and uh, let's try and free up these pins. So you need to get a mould grip, grab it on the end, try and lever it round and round and pull it out at the same time. See this one's very very dry because the seal hasn't been fitted properly. And then you need to clean it up. So it's heavily rusted, that's why it keeps sticking. Get a screwdriver, rub them down, scrape all the rust off. In this particular case it doesn't matter that you, whether you uh, score it or not because there's no particular great seal on this piece of metal. Clean that up and uh, get some penetrating spray and uh, any tissue. Clean up as much as possible of any old grease and gunk rust residue from the inside. Do that a couple of times. Maybe give it a bit of a scratch as well. See all the rubbish that comes out of it. And once you've cleaned it up you haven't done fully yet but check it uh, slides smoothly and then we'll reassemble and lubricate in a minute. We also want to clean out this little slot where the rubber seal goes which is all gunked up. Like so, get some tissues in there. Then first we refit the rubber seal. This little edge here has to go in this recess. So uh, quite a tight fit. Push that in. And we do this to make sure that the rubber seal is fitted fully because we can now see from the inside whether that's sitting uh, equally flush. I'll just try adding a little bit of grease onto it to see if that helps it slide in. Might help. It is, this is one of the more difficult ones. And I've kind of had just a small lubrication on it. Let's see if that helps. Turn it as we fit it, which we can now do, and that has actually helped 
You can now check on the inside, hopefully you can see that. But it's now an even shape all the way around the inside. So that's obviously the key, add a bit of uh, lubrication first. Uh, I like to use uh, this Molly grease. When these are uh, originally made, they come with some sort of graphite, uh, graphite grease inside. Molly grease is pretty similar, probably doesn't matter what sort of grease you use. And uh, I'm going to push a bit of grease in there a couple of times. Maybe rotate to give it a chance to release the pressure. Let's see if this is going to work or not. Okay, so we finally managed to uh, get the pin to stay in and the seal to stay in. That's uh, What's that one done? This one is also uh, pretty stiff actually. So maybe we need to add a little bit more lubrication there. Okay, so that's both pins moving nice and freely. Uh, the surface where the brake pads go is cleaned up and we'll put some copper grease on those surfaces, these ones here, not only stops it rusting but uh, allows for easy movement of the brake pads. And in fact the clips actually go onto these areas so we'll uh, lubricate these up as well for the spring clips. Uh, we want to keep the grease way away from uh, anywhere the, where the disc is going to be. We'll do that in a minute by making sure we uh, wipe it all off. And we get that nice little grease. Don't forget to remove uh, any deposits and rust from these uh, spring clips as well. So remove any grease from there. Keep your hands clean. And then we need to reassemble the bracket. But when you put the bolts to hold the bracket back in place, but thread locking compound on Loctite 243 is the good one to use. Spread it around the threads. Then torque tighten the bolts. On this guy, it's 80 pound foot. I like to use the bendy bar sort. Stays far more accurate than the clicky ones. What you don't want to do is over tighten and snap the bolts. Uh, if you want to know how to calibrate your torque wrench, look at one of my other videos, by the way. Uh, next, we refit the brake pads and the caliper. A little bit of copper grease on these metal surfaces where it contacts the rest of the caliper. Just make sure that it moves freely in and out, which it does. That one's already fitted, do the same there. And then we need to uh, put some copper grease onto the surfaces of the back of the pads where the caliper touches, that just stops the uh, brakes from squealing. So then with the piston on the caliper screwed in so it's in that position such that this little stud on the back pad actually sits in the slot on the piston which you can check by sliding it forwards with the surface of the piston on the surface of the pad and just make sure that it slides all the way back. After you put the caliper in position, uh, press on the brake pedal a few times to bring out the piston on the caliper to engage the brake pads. And then you can just look through a little hole in here. Just check the uh, slot in the piston is at that position where I'm pointing there. And also that the surface of the piston is sitting on the surface of the brake pad, which I believe it is there so our little stud is in the correct position and then put these new bolts or reuse the old bolts and put thread locking compound on these new ones already have it installed and uh, then we just need to put the pin back in the um, handbrake cable onto the lever and we're nearly done so they're refitted uh, you should be able to just turn on the handbrake uh, actuating lever and be unable then to turn the wheel so we'll leave it unturned and unactivated you can turn the disc and then just twist the handbrake lever it should then be fully on 
off and turns on and activates so the handbrake is then working well and we just need to reattach the little pin apply a little bit of copper grease onto this one as well just to keep it all nicely lubricated fit the spin before we fit the spring obviously otherwise it'd be uh, difficult to get it in place and we have our little locking pin so you just need to find the hole in the end just to push that home and it's locked in place and then for the spring what you need to do is get hold of a pair of pliers onto the end of the spring leave it into that little slot a presto job done so that's all the brakes all reassembled and uh, should all work nicely okay thanks for watching job done oh one more thing of course don't forget to refit the dust shield and of course a little bit of uh, lick of paint makes it look a bit better if you fancy doing that use uh, special caliper paint that finally is the end okay thanks for watching bye